The Quiet Warrior Show, where we help top leaders find their pathway to incredible success and a lifetime of happiness. Here is your host, Tom Dutta, The Quiet Warrior. All right, everybody, we are live here on The Quiet Warrior Show. My name is Tom Dutta. I am The Quiet Warrior, and we're live streaming across Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube. Now, this is a real treat because as we tape the future podcast, you get to peek into the studio live, bloopers and all. Uh, where can you find this podcast? We're going to be producing it on The Quiet Warrior Show. You can get that at all of your uh, podcast channels. We'll be also creating a YouTube premiere video. You'll be able to find that on the Tom Dutta YouTube channel. Again, these will be productions that will air in the future after we do this taping. I have a guest on today and excited, exciting. I wanted to just tell you before I bring her on, if you're on the the uh, live stream video, you can see her patiently waiting. Uh, LaVon Earl is here with us today. And we met, we connected through our work. We're fellow authors and everybody, I've been spending a lot of time learning about my faith and my background as a coach and executive. And there's common threads in some of the things we're going to talk about today. And so it's an honor to have on the show today, LaVon Earl. LaVon, welcome to The Quiet Warrior Show. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. All right. It's awesome to have you down in Laguna, California, Laguna Beach. I've been down there for sure. We're up in Vancouver, British Columbia for all those who are watching this, the magic of technology. Uh, uh, LaVon, I want to ask you something just uh, off the wall that's fun. Tell us one thing about yourself that you think most people I don't know. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, most people don't know. Uh, I think that I have a commonality with that. I've been through the hard times and that uh, God has just made me victorious. Uh, what would you not know about me? I, I, I'm a chess addict. I love chess. I play okay. chess all the time. All right. There it is, everybody. She nailed it. And, you know, it's funny, the threads in her stories. I grew up in the school and the chess club and uh, it's a game I'm passionate about, too. So maybe one day we'll play virtual chess. Oh, I, love it. I want to read a little bit about your background so we know the depth of your work. Uh, everybody, LaVon is the founder and director of YKI Coaching Associates. Uh, she's a master certified Christian coach. Now, when I first read that, you know, my skepticism went up and nothing personal, but, you know, a Christian coach, what does that mean? And, you know, are you coaching and teaching through the Bible? You're going to explain all that to us. Uh, you train and equip Christians to become the disciple that God has called them to become. I think that's very intriguing. And I'm really excited because your book is coming out in February through Morgan James Publishing, A Coach for Christ. The title in itself got me intrigued to read your book. We'll hear about that. Everybody, her her professional trainings include coaching and counseling, neuro-linguistic programming, uh, sozo healing. You'll be talking about that because I didn't even say it right, I'm sure. Uh, vision therapy. Uh, really, I love the word emotional wellness. And you've been married 33 years. You have three children and two more through marriage and three grandchildren. A uh, total package of uh, wonderness there. And I love this last part. You work with those who are experiencing conflict in relationships, and you have the ability to relate and understand others. Now, before I give it back to you, I just want to tell you that a lot of the people watching my show are, are just average people. Some are business leaders. And, you know, through my career, LaVon, relationship problems don't just exist in family. They also in, exist in the business community where we have leaders trying to lead teams in the world, and they can't get along with each other. So I right. think you have you have something here for everybody. Let's give it back to you. This is about the hero's journey and the story. Some go back to their childhood. Where did it all start? And what was it that got you into the purpose of what you're doing today? Wow. Great question. Well, I always like to tell people that God takes our weaknesses and makes them our strengths if we surrender those things to him and he'll work them out for our good. So naturally everybody has a story. So 10 years ago for me, I was suffering a very uh, difficult time during, in my marriage. Um, infidelity had hit my marriage and I found myself completely depressed and, and suicidal. And I thought, well, gosh, a Christian like me, like how come I can't get my mind right? What do, what do I need to do to get my mind right? And so I dove into lots of different trainings to help heal me first. I didn't plan 
plan on having this be something that I was doing for other people. I wanted to get myself well. And so I dove into um, training in, in hypnotherapy. And as a Christian, I really, it would have worked so much better for me if the hypnotherapist had my Christian values and beliefs. So I have taken what I've learned and formed it into godly meditation, vision therapy, as we call it, using our mind for God's glory. So that being said, I went through counseling training, inner healing training, um, sozo healing, which you did say it correctly, sozo healing, that means <laughs> wellness. Um, and so all of these different trainings to really get my mind right. And I did, you know, when I told the Lord that I was going to go back into my marriage because God was really calling me back into my marriage. My husband is an amazing man. He's wonderful and completely um, surrendered his life to the Lord. And so since I was doing that, I told the Lord, I said, well, I don't want just an average marriage. Like I want an amazing marriage. I want a fantastic marriage and, you know, I'll do whatever it takes to get there. And we have an amazing marriage. We've been married for 33 years. It's wonderful. And I am so grateful that I get to walk in this just beautiful mindset where the Lord is speaking to me daily and I'm hearing beautiful things and I walk with a great narration in my mind. So that's just kind of the start of it. Well, thank you. I just brought us back together again on the video. Uh, first of all, I want to honor you and say thank you for sharing that part of your your journey. I mean, it's painful. You're you're doing it live streaming, and a lot of people can't show vulnerability, Levon, as you I'm sure you know from the coaching you do. It's all it's seen sometimes as weakness. I want to bring in the thread of uh, what you you talk about with your faith. Uh, most people know that a couple of years ago, I experienced a serious. A brain injury through a fall in a bathtub. And it led me to a point where I turned to faith, which I really denied from my early years from what was going on as a, a kid in my home. I just, I just turned my back on it. And one of the things that stood out for me, I just want to put this out there as context, is that a lot of people that I've learned from about the Bible uh, teach that, you know, you have to be like you know, you have to be like you know, God or you have to be God-like. And what I, what I really learned is that the truth is that the Bible is not my story. It's actually the story of, it's God's story. And, you know, the rules I learned in my childhood, I tried to apply in business. I was successful, but I failed along the way relating to people. Nobody ever taught me the right way to have relationships. My father was addicted and, you know, he's passed now. It was through studying the Bible, it was through studying uh, God's story and taking learnings out of that and applying it into my life that actually changed everything. And mm -hmm. so th thank you for sharing that. The, I'm an advocate for mental health. And when you talk about infidelity and being able to work through that, I want to talk more about that because uh, there is a lot of shame that comes through uh, circumstances that we encounter in our lives um, mm -hmm. and how we, how we move through that. I'm mm -hmm. curious if you can teach us, you had this moment of truth uh, in your marriage, and then you came through it with your faith. But if I was a client of yours and I sat down with you and said, you know what, I just found out that, you know, my wife's been unfaithful to me and I'm, I'm crushed and I'm having these suicidal thoughts. Uh, mm. Talk to me and help me understand what, what do you do with that? Awesome. Well, I think the number one thing that we need to remember is that not every marriage can be reconciled. We don't want to reconcile with toxic people. We certainly want to forgive, but not every marriage can be reconciled. So I really do believe in divine divorce, that I believe that God does not want you in abusive situations. And so one of the things that I take people on the journey on when I, I also work with people that have been um, sexually trafficked and abused to help them to get their emotional wellness. So we have to remember that first and foremost, that we are independent apart from any relationship. So really healthy exercise to do is to take yourself really like on a time machine. And if you were to go 200 years from now, away from everybody, you don't have any relationship in your life that you currently have. You don't have the same church. You don't have the same business. You don't have the same anything. To discover your true identity is the most powerful thing and will give you the most strength that you can conquer anything in life to understand your true identity. So apart from anything, 
who are you? So if I use myself as an example, which I do and help people to understand, and if I were to take myself away from every relationship, every business, all the things, who am I? We need to discover that. So for me, I would still be worshiping the Lord. I would still be having my private time, my meditation practices. <clears throat> Pardon me. I would still be going to the beach. I would still be out in nature. I would still be helping people because I absolutely love people. I would be playing tennis. And so it's really helping people to get their identity and their passions back for who they are apart from anything. And so beginning to understand that the pain in your life has a purpose. And that will help you to be able to give back and to find what you can do to take this pain and use it for something that's good. And that is in discovering your true identity, who you are. And so in that true identity, I teach godly anchoring because anchoring is something that will really help you. And I, I don't want to go too long. You can stop me where you want and I can expand on those things. But those are tools that are really going to help people um, in learning how to anchor yourself. No, thank you. And uh, I'm enjoying the the journey through the, you know, the coaching here. Everybody, we're just going to catch you up if you just dropped in on the live stream that, you know, I asked LaVon Earl, you know, take us back where it started. And there's always this moment in in. Uh, uh, the the hero's journey by Joseph Campbell. We talk about the dark night of the soul, where sometimes there's this moment of truth, where there's either a lot of pain or something not so good happens in life. And we go seeking and we come back, and we come back as a coach and a teacher. Uh, Levon talked about uh, her marriage and something difficult happening, where she had to work through that. And I asked her to coach me as if I was, you know, I have discovered there was infidelity in my marriage and. I was having some difficult thoughts. Uh, one of the things I want to talk about with you on that, just riff on that, is this this topic of faith and and uh, God. You bring it into the coaching for a lot of people watching who don't understand uh, their faith, maybe as well as you and I might. Help us understand in layman's terms it, when we talk about anchoring. Here's here's what I've learned. I've learned that in studying the the Bible uh, that all the institutions that are around us will eventually crumble. Our children will will move away. Our careers, as mine did at one point, will be downsized or they might go away. The material things we have that a lot of times I was a self-worth chaser trying to fill a void in, in my soul when I was younger, those things eventually will go away. And ultimately, the one relationship that will always be there is the relationship with with God, that true relationship. And so when I went through my difficult times, especially with mental health from, from a chapter in my life recently, I, I found that I could always depend on, on God as being my anchor. I could sit and I could have conversations and I'll finish on this and give it back to you about the mental health aspect. There is anxiety, which is something that I struggled with um, uh, for a long time. And you know, I was taught in my my own uh, cognitive behavioral uh, program to deal with that, and I didn't really understand what anxiety was, and it was really not being uh, mindful enough, worrying about the future, you know, worrying about the past. And I find that when I can sit and I can study the Bible, I can read, and I can be in that quiet relationship, even just praying with the Father, my anxiety dials down. I can become very mindful and very balanced. And so that one, that one thing, I mean, God to me is a coach to me, as I call him, uh, he's not judgmental. And uh, my pastor said something like this. He said, God doesn't just like you. He loves you. Yeah. And, and so for people who go through their life, not feeling loved or enough, which was a thread in my backstory here, here comes something that undeniably is, is always going to be that anchor, mm -hmm. uh, for me. So I'm going to give it back to you now and just ask you to take us further. One of the things I read in your wonderful bio and on your website with your coaching program is changing limiting beliefs. Mm -hmm. And so the belief, I'll throw one out at you. I'm not good enough. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, somebody goes through and you mentioned infidelity, but, you know, I, I can't imagine dealing with that. But, you know, if you grow mm -hmm. up or you go through something like that, there's a feeling that you've you know, you failed, you're not good enough. How do you, how do you coach people to unwire those, those beliefs that maybe sometimes are put in us by somebody else? I love it. Um, thank you. So I too also suffered from childhood emotional neglect. I felt like, uh, 
throughout my life, I didn't feel like I was loved. And this world <clears throat> is a broken world. We we all in the, our dysfunction ranges, right? There's some people that come from highly dysfunctional families and some pretty good families, and there's still some brokenness there. There's always some brokenness there. So regardless if you've been raised in a really healthy family or even one that wasn't very good, you're going to experience some brokenness because this is a broken world and we don't come with this perfect narration. But the words that run through our mind, our narrator is the most important thing for your day daily sound mind happiness that you're going to be able to experience. So it's all about getting our mind right. And how do we do this? Now, anchoring is a secular term that um, I have taken and turned into a godly practice for our ministering what we do. And first of all, even we work with people that are not Christians because even if you're not a Christian, we just point people to that which is good because everything that is good is from God and we all want good things in our life. We all want to feel loved, we all want to feel worthy. We want to move past any feelings of not feeling good enough, any shame, any of those things that so we can walk in our power that God desires to give to us so that we can be successful and overcome this world. So in godly anchoring, in our practice, what we do is we use the sense of smell because your neurology and your olfactory work together. We've all probably had times when we smelled maybe some baked cookies and we thought of grandma or maybe you smelled a perfume and you thought of a, a time in your life. And so that is how it works for our mind. So we need to establish an anchor in our mind in a godly or a good way so that you can really bring yourself to those good emotions, to overcome feelings of not feeling good enough and those feelings of unworthiness. So I suggest to people that they get yourself an essential oil that you really like, something that works for you. There's just so many of them out there. I use the one that's called Stronger. I like the way it smells. And so I suggest that you keep it on your bathroom sink and you just anchor yourself each and every morning and at night, do it twice a day. You brush your teeth twice a day. That's why I recommend putting it on your sink because you'll have it twice a day. And really to anchor yourself in the Lord that I am, I am worthy, I am loved. And the more that you begin to say these things, you begin to form a new pathway in your mind that anchors you in who you are in Christ. And as you do that and using your mind and your visualization in these practices, really receiving his love and visualizing God's love for you. It's all about our mind, our visualization, our narration. And once we have our narrator right, when we're going throughout the day, we are feeling, I am good, I am loved, I am worthy, and you begin to change the way that you think. Well, thanks, Levon. I think that's powerful. One of the things that I I learned from watching professional sports, and uh, you know, my father taught me golf as a young age, and I grew up watching you know some of the greats in that sport. Jack Nicholas was one. Uh, Obviously, Tiger Woods is a very different era of legendary golfer. And my dad gave me a book, and it, it was from, by Tiger Woods, and it said when, you, when he learned to play the game, his father taught him to start by visualizing the, the pin on the green and watching the ball go in that. So as he's, as he's standing on the, on the tee, he's not seeing the gra grasses on the side, the tall grass or the bunkers or the water or the crowds. He's simply visualizing the end and the body and the mind follow. I love it on your website you, you and in your bio, it talks about winning the battle of the mind. Mm -hmm. It's one of the things that I, I think is vital. I don't think a lot of people who haven't studied brain science realize through things like neuroplasticity that I learned this, that our brains are plastic and uh, we can retrain I love the word you use, different pathways. Uh, we can attach a different meaning to a thought. And it was a long time in my life that I didn't understand I had that power within. Mm -hmm. And so even a lot of people who are in business today who are struggling with COVID and with the, their businesses failing, you know, using this battlefield of the mind and anchoring, you know, maybe we can anchor a future vision and, and find our way through what for many people is very devastating today because of the uh, pandemic we're in. I wanna move to one other item that we have here and I wanna then we get into that amazing book you're, you've been talking about that this one here about parenting. Now I have a, a big heart for children and, and for parenting and I'll make a controversial statement every time somebody asks me about mental health and addictions and that 
I believe this the root of a lot of the issues in, in this world are are rooted in parenting. In okay. fact, I, I wish that you know there was a way to teach parents what we know today, uh, because words matter, and everything that comes out of their mouths and every action anchors into their children's th thinking patterns. A lot of what children learn, like me, things were said that aren't true. So going back to parenting, talk tell us about that. How do you work with parents in the the work that you're doing coaching? Well, 100% you're right. And the fact that our words do matter, um, as I mentioned, working with the the women over at the, the rescue mission, um, without fail, they all come from families that, that they didn't feel loved. And so they were seeking love in all the wrong places. So in, in parenting and working with your children, helping to instill in them the words of who they are. But that all comes back to healing the self First, because we cannot be give what we don't have. So if a parent has not felt loved themselves, if they haven't felt worthy themselves, it's going to be hard for them to instill those things into their children. And so what I would say is the first person to work on is yourself. <clears throat> we always say in our practice that the most important client is you. So you've got to work on yourself first or you're not going to be able to give back to anybody else. So we, in working with parents, whether it's a parent, a leader, CEO of a company, whatever it is, that person needs to be able to be filled. And if they're a non-believer, they're going to need to be able to sit quietly and fill themselves with those things which are good. But in my personal belief, I believe that all power comes from God. And so as we sit quietly and allow the Holy Spirit to fill our lives so that we can give back to other people, that's where it begins. So with the parent, I would say it first begins with you. Get yourself healed and whole because the more you experience love and goodness in your life, it overflows and you're able to give it out to your children to your employees, to those that you're leading, because leaders are not necessarily being fed by other people. They need to be fed by a higher power because that's the way that they're able to lead. We have to be able to be replenished first. No, thank you. So well said. Everybody, teaching moments here on the show. If you've just dived into this on live stream, go back and listen to the beginning. And as LaVon told her story and how she today is coaching and working to help people. LaVon, I wanted to share something that I didn't expect I would, but I have a little book in here. You can see it on my screen. It's my my little journal. And every Sunday in our home is, is uh, online church. And um, in reading the book of John, uh, the word Peter comes up, and my pastor was was explaining that Peter, uh, the the word is comes from the I think it's Latin word, but anyway, it's from the word petro, which is rock. And then as he continued to explain, he used the terms kickable, kickable pebble. And so in the Bible, the story of Peter, I mean, he was the one who was always falling down and, and, and having struggles. He was the one who was sinking, trying to walk over the water. I mean, all these fables that are told. And mm -hmm. The metaphor of this was that Jesus will take anyone to teach. And I think that is the connection I have to why faith means so much to me today. Because, you know, when I was younger, it was my parents teaching me. But my parents disappeared through the divorce and things that happened in their life. My father came into the world and, and brought me in, but his father was an alcoholic. And my dad didn't know how to parent. So he was a military man. But the rules he knew from parenting were were the wrong rules and so you know i grew up the same lines and i've met many people in business who can't f deal with their blind spots they struggle leading people you know mm -hmm. they have these thinking patterns where they're trapped with old beliefs and thoughts mm -hmm. and until i started reading the bible and discovered that this is one one teacher one coach jesus christ that regardless of who I am, regardless of how bad I am, how much I sin, how, how many rules I break in my life, he's, he, he's going to love me no matter what. And I think that is what is so key about having you know, uh, faith and having a coach uh, rooted in some of these teachings. And the last thing I want to read to you is that this came out of my Sunday. And uh, I'm just going to read this out. A seed cracks and self-destructs in order to have growth. For those of us who don't understand growth, we don't understand the moment of cracking is a moment of a whole new life. And that just came, these little nuggets just come from reading the Bible and having somebody who's legit, you know, not one of these bang their fists and woohoo and all this, you know, 
prophecy crap that I that turns me off. But somebody teaching and interpreting verses in the Bible, a lot of these thoughts that I'm starting to work with in my life come from that. And yeah. it's 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 changing the way I live. It's making me live in his name, but live and be, you know, Christ-like. And I never understood that because it was never taught to me that way. And so if you understand what I'm saying there, I want to get into this book that you're releasing called A Coach for Christ. Now, mm -hmm. you got to tell us about the name here because all mm -hmm. my life, Christ has been my coach. But what does that mean? Tell us a bit about that book. Awesome. Um, well, you know, we need Jesus. He is our coach. He is the ultimate life coach. And in our ministry, our practice, we point to Jesus. And so our, our coaching ministry is called YKI Coaching. And that stands for your kingdom inheritance, because we believe that everybody has an inheritance in the Lord. It also stands for you know it, because we believe that the individual knows and can hear from God. And so God wants to speak to the individual. So we never advise, but we always point to Jesus. So we need Jesus, but people need Jesus in us. And so as you mentioned that Jesus is your safe place, he's never judgmental. He's always there. He's your cheerleader, your comforter, there for you to help you get back on your feet. And so we all need that in our life on a fleshly basis. It's important to have people around us that have Jesus in them so they too can be our cheerleaders and cheer us on and help us point us to Jesus. So being a coach for Christ is that simple, that very thing is taking and coaching for Christ, leading people to Jesus, leading people to that which is good so they can come to know God, to be able to receive from him that safe place, that love and, you know, as you said, that you're growing in Christ, becoming more like him. The more time that we spend in his presence, the more we become like him and we become transformed. And so we all need those safe people in our life. I say particularly having a coach. I believe that every single person in this world needs a personal cheerleader, a personal coach that will walk their life journey with them, help them when they're feeling doubt, help them when their faith falls, help them to have a hope for their future. And that's the other thing with godly anchoring. It's great that we can do these things on our own. But oftentimes, if we're feeling vulnerable, if we're hurt, if we're wounded from infidelity or sexual abuse or any kind of failings that we have in our life, it's important to have a coach that comes in with that hope for you so they can deliver for you a godly meditation personalized for you so that you can get your hope back so you can be able to see your vision and your future which is good because God has great plans for you and coaches that are coaching for Christ help the individual to understand that God has great plans that he wants good things for you that he is a good good father and a safe place to be well, thank, thank you for that, Yvonne. I'm excited about that book. Now, I know we'll get to that at the end of the show where you can tell us where to get it. Can you hold it up there? I know you have it in your hands. Yeah, yeah. A coach for Christ. Here we go. There it is. Keep it on the screen. Awesome. It's beautiful, beautiful cover. What a great uh, picture of you there. I think we, we have that as the show art for the show we're producing. Everybody, uh, Coach for Christ, you, you want to get that book. And I want to make this very clear that if you're looking to learn about the, the scriptures and learn about how to apply you know the the uh, meanings of the Bible, which was which is really not our story. There's over forty. I've read over forty four authors uh, of the of the Bible and stories being told of the life of of God. Uh, get this book, and a whole new paradigm exists in it in terms of how to bring a coach for Christ uh, to better your life in so many ways. I can't wait to get a signed copy from you, hint, hint. And uh, then I'll put that on my, I'll put that on my, my shelf and I'm going to read it. And I'm going to commit to giving you a review. Everybody for authors, their work gets known when average people like us read their book and post a review online. So please get the book when it comes out and uh, consider doing a review for it. Uh, my mind went in a bunch of different directions of on Levon, last time, last moment when you were talking about the book before, that I just want to put all this out there, and it may come out in many different pieces, but it's going to come out in a narrative <laughs> that's going to make a point. And for those who know me, I'm struggling through. I've been struggling through depression. I've been struggling through a brain injury where my thoughts are multiplied in my head, but when they come out, you know, I have to string them together. So I'm going to do my best to make this uh, clear that. Uh, 
as a CEO myself, somebody who uh, runs companies and grew up in the corporate sector, when I got to a level of leadership, Levon, where they say it's lonely at the top, when you finally get to that position, whether you're a business owner, an entrepreneur, a CEO, a coach of a team, you realize that there's nobody to talk to. And mm -hmm. so in the corporate sector, the first thing that the company I was working for did, and it was an American-based company, and I was running the Canadian uh, parent of that company, they said, uh, we got a coach for you. And I didn't even know what to do with it. I was 31 years old and I said, what's that for? And they said, well, this coach should help you see, you know, yourself and help you make some shifts and, you know, develop a relationship with your, your team. So business leaders are given coaches. And, and then in the teachings of uh, Napoleon Hill, uh, the great book called Think and Grow Rich that I, I think is well read in the business community, there's a term mastermind, which I know you're aware of, uh, masterminding is two or more people working in harmony. So you and I could be simply having a conversation and we're working towards resolving something. That's a mastermind. Well, in business, masterminding happens all the time. You have your, so I'm a CEO. I have my vice presidents, a team. I had a bunch of people working with me and you have one-to-ones, they call it. So you're masterminding to solve problems. Mm -hmm. When you need to go resolve your own challenges as a leader, you can't always go to your board of directors because of vulnerability and safety. You can't go home and take it into the family or you know, maybe you'll end up being divorced because it's always about work. So you have to find an outlet, you have to find a coach. So mm -hmm. I started drawing this parallel that, wait a minute, if I, if I draw an org, org chart, the kingdom of God, this, you know, the ultimate kingdom of God, the CEO is, you know, is God. And then his, his first line leader uh, is Jesus Christ. And he's sending him out to be a guide and a coach to the people in the world. And then there I am in the corporate sector. The org chart is my board of directors is the kingdom, the company, the vision. And then there's me as a CEO. And then I have a team of managers, vice presidents that carry out my mission. And and yet I never, I never had a coach in my career that I could say I could tell anything to that yeah. wasn't going to judge me when the company wasn't doing well or there were relationship issues with you know that are between me and maybe others in the company and I, where i'm going with all of this is that when i finally discovered the power in the bible and the power of using the word uh, as a guide and when i understood things like the holy spirit and how that's in you to be a guide to help you make the right decisions man i wish when i became a ceo at the age of 31 I, I had my Bible and I had that as my ultimate mastermind partner. And I think there's many people in the business world I know because they've told me in one-to-ones privately that they pray. They pray on business decisions. They go home and they read the Bible and they're very faith-based, but they don't talk about it in business because there's a stigma. Uh, or maybe you're going to divide your tribe if you start saying you're, you're a Christian versus, you know, being uh, a Catholic. I was born in I'm baptized a Catholic when I was younger. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to put that out there. The more and more, as somebody comes from business, where talking about faith it sometimes is taboo, there's more and more that I realize now that the work you're doing and being able to bring, without forcing it on people, but be able to bring the, the principles of faith and coaching in Christ into that part of the world is extremely powerful. Yeah. And to develop better leaders where they have that safe haven, where that relationship ultimately is going to make them stronger, better people, better coaches of their people, better husbands, better fathers. I mean, it's amazing. So I want to honor you and give it back to you. So, so great the work you're doing. I'm so proud of you and I love you and your story. Why don't you just take it back and give us the last few minutes about where people can get a hold of you, your work, and this amazing book that's coming out. No, thank you. Um, well, our ministry is called YKI Coaching, as you see on the screen there. So our website is ykicoaching.com. Our Christ-centered coach training is on there because we believe that we want to train and equip 
every Christian to become a coach. We believe that God has said to go and make disciples of all nations. And disciples is really the same word as our modern day word of being a coach. And so everybody really needs a coach in their life. And so you can find all that information on there right on my very front page. It says receive coaching or become a coach. So you can grab that on there. And then of course the book is on there, which is a coach for Christ. So just YK coaching backslash a coach for Christ. So you can pre-order the book if you would like to, um, to get that book. What's great about this book is that it's a perfect gift for not only yourself, but even other coaches, because it has a whole list of like resources, who you are in Christ, where the scriptures are for, you know, someone's not feeling good enough. What words do you use for them? How do you bless them? So let's just say you have a child and your child is, if they're having a hard time in school, School, they're not feeling good enough. They're not feeling these certain things. They're not feeling powerful. And you want to know how to bless them, how to um, give words to them to help them grow. And this is just a great resource for anyone who is a leader to be able to communicate how other people learn, how you can talk to them and bring them over and how, how they would desire to hear what you have to say because of the way that you're communicating with them. So um, just remember ykicoaching.com. Everything is on there, how you're able to get a hold of me or any of our great coaches on our team. And um, we just would love to come alongside of you, help you be your cheerleader, comfort you and help you to grow in every way so that you can just live your best life here. Well, that's wonderful. Everybody check that out, ykai.com. Certainly go back and uh, see this uh, show or hear the podcast when it comes out in the YouTube premiere video where you can see the book as it's held up, the visually stunning book. And definitely I'm going to get that and take a take a deep read on it. A couple things that came up again. There it is on the screen. Awesome book. A couple of things that came up as you were talking, and again, my mind went in many directions on a journey. I, I went back and I guess I glanced at my paper here in the studio and I saw the word uh, breaking change of the past. I just wanted to mention something that I really honor about what you said. There are certain teachers, and I won't be critical of uh, pastors, but there's certain sh teachers that have taught that forgiveness in, is used in a very different way than I believe. In other words, you can forgive people, uh, but when you really look to unwire things like trauma and men the mental health, thinking traps, for example, if you've been through an abusive life, you have to have separation from toxic people. You have to forgive to release them and release yourself. But there's nothing in the Bible that says forgive but allow somebody who's toxic to continue to hurt you. There's nothing that teaches that principle. And mm -hmm. yet there's been misteachings, in my opinion, of the Bible that made me for a long time feel guilty right. about the fact that I've had in my family an issue of a toxic individual to the point where it's crippled me uh, emotionally. This was years ago. And it, was, it wasn't until somebody taught me just literally in the last few years that you can break the change and separate from toxic people. You can love them from afar. You can pray for them. But in order to heal and change that mindset, the battle in the mind, you said, you've got to cut out that to be able to rewire and retrain your thoughts to be more positive. And what you said was a huge uh, plus for me and I think why people need to get a hold of you in your book is that you teach a very balanced approach of faith and uh and, and healing. And I just want to honor you for saying, uh, for teaching us that today. The last thing that I'll say is that we're going to honor you with some words here. As I'm interviewing you, you probably saw my head turning a bit on the video here. I'm writing notes. These aren't scripted, LaVon. And for those we've never met before up until this interview, the, the first one is love. It comes from you and knowing your backstory and how you've overcame that and you continue to love uh, others, including the people close in your life. It's amazing. The second one is faith. You are faith. And mm -hmm. uh, I think we can learn from that. The third one is hope. There's something about the positivity in interviewing you and hearing you speak. It gives me hope. And we need that in today's world. Mm -hmm. And man, the energy from you. There's this aura, there's this energy and it's vibrant and it's healthy. And it just wants me to get off this podcast and go out and do something you know, mm -hmm. meaningful. So thank you for that. I honor you with those words. 
And finally, we're going to give you an award today. I don't know if we prepared you for this, but I will be inducting you into uh, what we call the Quiet Warrior Tribe. Now, I'm going to just show you something. So we're going to go to full screen on me for a moment. Now, you see in the background there, LaVon, you can see this uh, image. There's a, there's a guy who looks a little bit like a guy I know. <laughs> All right. I'm going to bring you back on. That's that's actually the image of the award. So it's actually a coin. I had it minted, hand-painted, and crafted in the United States. It comes in a cherry box. The front of the coin is the artwork from my show. The back of it is actually the, the, the beautiful narrative of the hero's journey, which is the journey to really seek the true meaning of life. What's remarkable to me since learning about faith, because my life hasn't always been based in faith, there's three words on that coin if you look closely, purpose, action, and life. And I created that years ago before even starting to study and learn about faith. Well, if we think about the Bible and Jesus, he had a purpose. What was it? Not to be a miracle healer, but to be a teacher. What was his action? If anybody knows the Bible, open up the book of Acts. The book of Acts are the actions of his disciples. What actions did they take to go out and carry on his mission? And the last word is life. It's all about living the life that we deserve and desire. By receiving this, this coin, uh, Lavon, you join the tribe of quiet warriors. There's, there's roughly 150 now across the world in 11, 10 countries carrying these coins. They were originated in World War I by soldiers who carried them to commit to each other in community. And if you showed up without your coin, maybe you bought drinks or dinner. And today these coins are used around the world by first responders, even Alcoholics Anonymous, where my father spent most of his life healing uh, they use coins or chips to signify commitment. Uh, so by carrying it, I commit you to continuing your purpose and your action to change the lives of others. So welcome to the Quiet Warriors. Wow, what a what a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful um, honor and, and, and award. And I just, just appreciate how you spread love yourself by using godly words to pour into other people. I always tell people that words don't just say something, they make something. When they come into us, we take and we receive that word of love or we receive that word of faith. It really changes the person. So I really appreciate how you are just um, creating a revival, if I can use that word, with you know spreading your love and your goodness and, and purpose for other people. So thank you so much for having me and, and allowing me this opportunity and, and honoring me in such a beautiful way. I just think that's really beautiful. Well, th thank you for those kind words. And everybody catch this show. We're going to be releasing it on the Quiet Warrior Show, the international podcast, as well as a few days after that a YouTube premiere, start a watch party, go to and give it a like and a rating to honor LaVon's work. Now, those dates will be set for the near future. Uh, but for today, LaVon, I want to say thank you for being on the Quiet Warrior Show. Oh, thank you so much for having me. It was an honor. All right, everybody, find that true passion like you hear from LaVon and live that life of purpose. Live the life that you deserve and desire. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Stand by. Yeah, I'm just ending the broadcast. Thank you for listening to The Quiet Warrior Show. Create is a motive-based leadership development firm. www.kreat.ca